This is the quietest they'll be the entire day. <laughs> Hello, my name is Tom Dubik. I've had the incredible good fortune of being a teacher for the past 25 years. And at Charlotte Land, we have taught engineering more than 20 of those years. When they talk about STEM education, oftentimes we're talking about engineering. Now, the class of girls you see here were my seventh grade girls engineering program. In the middle school, we divide engineering up by the sexes. Boys engineering, girls engineering. We also have high school engineering. We have a lot of goals of the classes. Goals we want to use math and science to solve problems. One of the other important goals for us is the idea that we want our students, our future leaders, to be technology creators, not just consumers. So with that in mind, I'd like to share what these young ladies have accomplished. Go ahead, India. Some of you may be wondering what we mean by when we say a Raspberry Pi. First of all, it's something that you probably don't want to eat. According to raspberrypi.org, a Raspberry Pi is a credit card sized computer that can do as many things as your desktop computer can do, such as word processing, games, and spreadsheets. It's like a little computer that can do so many things. The Pi can also play high definition video. Not only is a Raspberry Pi useful for so many things, it can also help us advance in technology because it only costs $35. Here's Madison. Many of us cannot stay away from technology. Most of us would be lost without our phones. Yet also, most of us have no idea what work goes into making our phones and computers. Walking into engineering, I had no idea what to expect. Now I know the components into programming most apps. Without engineering, we wouldn't have phones, computers, or cars. What most people can't live without, such as phones, almost all of them don't understand how they work. If more of us get into engineering, we could discover ideas we've only dreamed of. This is Ashley. At the beginning of the year, I wasn't sure about engineering. I thought it would be lots of math and research, but I love making things, so I decided to try it anyway, and I'm glad I did. We did things like building and flying model airplanes and designing bridges. Then we found out that we were the first class in America to use Raspberry Pis. With them, we discovered Scratch and got to, and got to program video games and make shows like this one. Let's record. Thank you. Hi, my name is Cheney. And I'd like to talk to you about getting girls exposed. Now ask yourself, when making a pie, you want to start knowing the flavor or the goal. Well, what's our goal? My goal is to get girls interested in technology. Showing girls all that they have to offer the technology field and all that the technology field has to offer us. If there are more girls working in technology, productivity levels would increase and there would be more jobs. Now think about girls. If more of us knew the interesting things you could do with technology, we would most likely be more interested. While still being in the popular circle, girls would be more inclined to use their creative ideas and share with each other. Next ingredient. How do you reach that goal? Is it really too much work? The majority of teenage girls who are offered the chance to take engineering courses opt out because of the stereotypes that it's too much work or it's complicated. Most girls can do a simple makeup routine in less than five minutes consistently every morning, yet the thought of making a simple machine seems complicated. I want to offer girls the chance to understand their technology as well as operate it, thus give us a better understanding and a better use for it. Here's my friend Lily. After many attempts, we were able to light up a pillow and even make the LED on it blink, as you can see here. We did the same thing for these ordinary hair bows, but instead of having blinking light shining, we had constant light, as you can see in our hair. <laughs> here are my friends, Julia and Amanda. This one. 
Project Pie Pet was started when we built a motorized Lego dog and had the idea of controlling it from a Raspberry Pi. By hacking a stuffed animal dog that barks and taking the microchip and speaker out, we were able to transfer it to our Lego dog. Throughout the process, wires snapped and cracked, so we had to solder them back to their correct places. Using a USB cord, we hooked the dog up to the computer to program it with Scratch. After finding the right steps, we used Scratch on a Raspberry Pi to program the dog with a click of a button. As the video will play, you will see us click a button on Scratch to make the dog move its eyes, tail, and jaw. Then, by moving a distance sensor from the other stuffed animal dog, he will bark. We named him Pi. Here's our friend Breck. So many of you probably had annoying siblings growing up. If they were anything like my sister, they'd probably try and break into your room, steal your things, bother you, etc. If you asked me how I'd serve a Raspberry Pi, I'd say that I would use it to solve a problem like this one. This semester in engineering, we started programming with a software called Scratch. I got interested in it quickly. When Mr. Dubik told us about coming to the TED Talk, I decided that I was going to solve a problem that many 13-year-old girls face every day. Younger sisters that break into your room just to bother you. I decided to use an old kitty doorbell and combine it with a Raspberry Pi and an Adafruit prototyping plate. I found a tutorial for an SFX door trigger on Adafruit and adjusted it to fit my needs. First, I had to solder the headers onto a prototyping board, then wire it to a motion sensor and magnetic switch sensor. The motion sensor senses movement outside the door, and the magnetic switch sensor senses when the door opens. The sensor itself goes on the door frame, and when the door opens, the magnet and the sensor come apart and the circuit is incomplete, causing the alarm to go off. Now, because I can't bring a door on stage, I created a short video to demonstrate my alarm. Next up is my friend Katie. If you had asked me this summer to write you a story about a lily pad and a raspberry pi, I would have spun you a tale about frogs and fruit. After a semester of engineering with Mr. Dubik, I can now tell a tale of lights, conductible thread, programming, and a $35 computer that supports the changing whims of a 13-year-old girl. First, let's talk about the lights and the lily pad. The lily pad Arduino is a programmable logic controller that lets you create simple programs to control lights, buzzers, and things like that. In engineering this semester, we learned how to use Scratch to create simple programs. So my dad and I started playing with sample code for the lily pad Arduino. I understood how to make the lights flash. And I figured I would create some wearable art with flashing lights. So my dad and I wrote a simple program to make the lights flash in a pretty pattern. The next day at school, my plans for wearable art changed from pretty to practical. That day, someone tripped over my rolling backpack, again, and said with these exact words, sorry, didn't see the rolling backpack there. Then it hit me. Instead of putting lights on a jacket, why not create turn signals and a brake light for my rolling backpack? <laughs> so my father and I changed the code to create the turn signals and stoplight. We used the Raspberry Pi to write, compile, and program the lily pad Arduino. We work with my mom to connect the lights, switches, and lily pad with conductible thread. I still think that's cool, sewing a circuit. Anyway, we sewed it all onto a cool fabric sleeve. 
being very careful that none of the threads cross each other. And that's how I ended up where I am now, with turn signals and a brake light from my rolling backpack. So today, when I tell you a story about lily pads and raspberry pies, it's not a tale of a frog on a lily pad eating a raspberry pie. It's the story of a 13-year-old girl who learned how to build and program an electronic contraption to solve a common problem. Here are my friends, Julia and Amanda. Considering how much time girls spend on social media, we each have the power to change girls' engineering. From repost, <coughs> tagging people, and posting on their walls, we need your help to spread our message. Another reason girls do not tend to take an engineering course at school is because girls have a stereotype for caring more about fashion and popularity. However, that is not the case for most girls, so we need to help the future of girls engineering by spreading the word. Please friend us on our Facebook page, Girls for Asbury Pie. Follow us on Instagram at Girls for Asbury Pie. Add us on Google Plus at Girls for Asbury Pie and email us at girlsforraspberrypie at gmail.com. Please tell all of your friends. Now you understand why I have one of the best jobs. I get to work with young people all over that are, are like this. Uh, just so you know, we purposely, no one told them what to write. I told them we're going to TED Talk, talk about engineering, and these are things they picked up. We used the videos they shot. They built almost all the stuff that you see in here. A couple of things they had help with. Dad, a dad or two might have helped uh, on a couple of uh, tough spots. But for the most part, these girls did all this work. All right? And we believe a lot more ladies. Seems to me from what the other speakers are saying, I think everybody in here generally believes we all can learn. And given the opportunity, we all want to contribute. Let me say it again, we all can learn, we can all contribute. Now, we live in a time, a very amazing time if you think about it. We now have computers that are so cheap that if the kids wreck it trying to take it to fix it or to build something new, it's not the end of the world. You would not give your child your laptop and a screwdriver. But a $35 Raspberry Pi, you would. And you'd let them try out things. Along with uh, electronics becoming open source, hardware open source, the software is now open source, the software is free. So if Python comes with this, Scratch, what they're using, Python's a professional language, and the other languages are being ported. Google thought enough of this to, spend, to buy, excuse me, several million dollars in Raspberry Pis for the children of Great Britain, where this was starting, this was less a year, a year ago. So it's a tremendous opportunity. Combine that now with modern manufacturing techniques. 3D printing, for example, being the classic that we're hearing so much about. Then with funding, group funding that's out there, uh, crowdfunding if you want to call it, for example, Kickstarter. People can go into manufacturing now. You can have a proof of concept built within a few weeks and then take something to the market. On Kickstarter, you get people to say, yes, I will buy that if you build it. So now you don't even have to raise as much capital. Because guess what? If nobody will buy it, then you shouldn't build it. The important part here we want to add to that then is that is we want to involve everyone in this. Let's think about a little bit about in history. It seems appropriate that within the next couple of years we'll have the 200th anniversary of the birth of the very first programmer. Augusta Ada King, Duchess of Lovelace. She was the first programmer. She worked on the Babbage machine. The Brits came very, very close to having a computer Year, decades before we did. I think uh, Dutch, the Duchess would have loved to have seen what, what occurred in the 40s and 50s with the big mainframe computers. In the 1980s, the advent of the PC. 1990s, internet. Now, social media. 
in the year 2000. So in this decade, what will it be? Could it be uh, 3D printing? Will it be big data? Whatever it is, we need to put the net out to get as many people involved as possible. And as we do studies to find out the best way to do it, I'm convinced it is to involve young people earlier than college to introduce them to programming or even high school. Let's get everybody an opportunity to try this everywhere. Because I think we can all agree. Young ladies know how to serve a Raspberry Pi. Thank you very much.